All right. Welcome back, fans of Vans. Today, I'm going to start trying to uh, troubleshoot some of the AV systems in here that have a few quirks to them. So when I bought this van, pretty much everything works. It's in beautiful shape. It runs great. But I noticed a couple of random things. First off, I'm going to start it up here so that the battery doesn't die while I'm working on all the TV and stuff. So quirk number one, this clock resets to 12 noon every time I turn on the truck. So that tells me that there's either a an issue with the clock radio in there. More likely though, what happened is that for some reason, the 12 volt constant hotline is not wired up to the radio. And I don't know if that's done intentionally by Explorer to try to save the battery, like minimize drain. Shouldn't really be necessary though. Uh, it's pretty standard for all cars that the standard hot 12 volt line is always powering the radio so you have your clock time saved. So I don't know if it's just uh, disconnected to the back. That's gonna be a project for another day. I wanna replace this whole head unit. Issue number two is that this TV up here turns on And it works. Let me power it up up there. However, I can't get any sound to come out of it. Now the van has all these speakers here. It has these little cube speakers. Let's see, there's four up here. One, two, three, four. And there's two more at the back here. It also has a set of speakers throughout the van for the stereo, including these door speakers here. There's speakers in the front doors. There's tweeters up on the A pillar. There's these big six by nines in the back here. And to further complicate things, there's a second head unit at the back. I don't even know what speakers that head unit powers or if it just powers headphones. There's also this little black box up here. I have no idea what this is for. There's one line coming out of it. I, it doesn't look like a speaker controller because I don't see left and right audio feeds. There's also this piece in the back, which is supposed to be mounted here. You can see the plastic tabs broke off of here. This looks like an infrared receiver for a remote. And I'm guessing that maybe it is for this thing. This is the satellite track vision box for direct TV. So maybe this is just the remote receiver for this. I don't know. This thing is like a mystery wrapped inside an enigma. So step one, you can see on the video here, this is another infrared receiver for a, another set of remotes. Don't know what that's for. It could be for the wireless headphones. It could just be the remote receiver for the TV because the TV is kind of blocked here by this padded framing. So step one, I've noticed that when you have the radio going, there's some uh, static from one of the speakers. One of the speakers is blown. This is Chain Company to create a treasure that will- And it's at the rear. So I'm going to fade the sound to the rear and see if I can track down which speaker it is. We know a ring comes to life when it's set with a center stone that speaks to you. Shane Company offers the largest selection of center stones, natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds, as well as natural gemstones, including rubies, sapphires, peach morganite, aquamarine, and amethyst. We sell our center stones loose, so you can compare stones side by side and select so it doesn't actually sound too bad right now, but I'm pretty sure it's coming out of that speaker, that left rear six by nine, or actually it's passenger, passenger rear six by nine, I should say. All right, so I think I know which stereo speaker is blown. I think I know which speakers the music comes out of. So step two of this, I'm gonna to try to track down the audio for the TV. This is the DVD player. Uh, the 
previous owners were nice enough to leave us a copy of Space Jam. LeBron James acting debut here. Uh, so, let's see. If I hit play here. Let's see if this works. There we go. It wasn't on yet. So, it's loading the disc. Let's see what we got up here. Ta-da! All right, so we have picture up here. KEC is the brand of the DVD player. All right, so the movie's playing now. Now here's the TV remote. It is all the way up to 60. That is the max volume. See the volume controls work. It goes up and down. No sound. Now these, t these vans have a kind of unique uh, system here where they have a separate switch for the TV speakers. So this way you can turn them off and the people in the back can just listen on headphones and the driver can listen to music, which is kind of a cool idea. So if I turn this on, the sound should be working. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that sort of uh, positive feedback bump when it turns on. I can hear a tiny bit. out of these speakers, but it's super faint. And so I think these speakers should also be for the TV. Yeah, I can hear a tiny bit of sound out of them. So. kind of puzzling because obviously I mean my theory is the switch is working because I can hear a little bit of sound so I don't know if all the speakers are blown but that seems unlikely that all six of these uh, TV speakers would be blown I don't know what that switch powers if it's a separate amp or if it's something else so I think I'm gonna open this up and see what I can find All right, I've got my tools with me here. I've got my trusty snap-on ratchet screwdriver, which I've had forever. This thing is fantastic. And I also have my newer toy that I just got recently, which is this electronic screwdriver. This thing is awesome. If you need to do screwing, removal, etc., without using a full-on power drill, this thing is a total time saver. So this thing is kind of pried on here. I'm gonna to try to gently pop this loose. And let's see what we got here. So it looks like we've got, hmm. We've got two electrical connections at the back, a blue wire and a black wire. And we've got a total of, or it's kind of a, it's kind of brownish wire actually. We've got a total of six pins on the back of here. Which is interesting that there's so many pins provided on a simple on off switch. All right, well, I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper. And this console is held on by these retention clips down here. So if you push this button down, it pops this clip loose. And then same thing on the other side, push this clip down, pop this loose, and then this whole thing could, should come off now. And you can see you've got this big bundle of wires going from here under the driver's seat. There's two big connection pins here. And I'm not sure what this is for. I'm guessing maybe there's a DC to 110 inverter under this seat. I'm still not sure why there'd be so many wires running from there into this center console here. It seems like an awfully lot of wires just to be running this DVD player. But, let me see what I can find. All right, so I have this opened up now. So you see there is also this video game set up here. This is a 12 volt socket, and so that's gonna be one of the connections here. You can see they have a, probably a, a 
power and a ground for this 12 volt and they have the standard RCA connection here. This must run to the TV. Let's see. There's two RCAs here. Yeah, so this is gonna be from the DVD player. This is gonna be from the TV. So one possible issue is that it's possible that the audio connection from this one on the back of the DVD player has come unconnected. So maybe I can check that. And then both of these run into the carpet here, and that must be fed up throughout the cab up to the overhead TV. Uh, let's see. So there's also some power lines here. There's an extra disconnected line. Don't know if that's supposed to be disconnected or if that fell off of something. That could possibly be affecting the switch for the speakers. I don't know. All right, so I've removed this cooler now because this will give me a little bit better access. I was trying to figure out how to get at everything. Going from underneath here where I was a minute ago with this lifted up, I still couldn't really access all the wires. So this gives me a little bit better access. This looks like the switch from the TV speaker control. I'm still a little bit confused just on what in general this actually powers. Maybe I can uh, track some of these wires down a little bit. This is the RCA output from the back of the DVD player. And these are all plugged in, which makes me think that it's not an issue there. Unless, of course, it's an issue behind the TV. If these pulled out from behind the TV up above, that could also cause a lack of audio coming out. All right, well, I've been poking around here for a while. I haven't gotten very far. All I've been able to figure out really is that this Pyramid 10 amp noise suppressor, this is what is powered by this switch. And I'm not familiar with these. I've done some stereo installs. I've never used one of these before, so I don't really know how it works. I did figure out as much as this is a ground. This is, uh, looks like it's to the 12 volt constant. And this sends power to the radio, which I'm guessing means to the speakers. And Okay, well, this wire just fell out now, so that's disconnected. Uh, but that was right here. And so this white wire that comes out through this bundle, this is just a chassis ground that gives a ground for the whole uh, console here, including the DVD player. So I don't know, it's possible that this piece has gone bad now too. I would like to just bypass this whole thing and just feed power to the speakers all the time because I don't think we're going to use the headphones uh, but I can't figure out how to do that so as usual I'm left with more questions than answers if you're watching this and you know how to rewire one of these please drop me a line in the comments I'm going to see if I can find a wiring diagram from Explorer but I've heard that they are not very helpful when it comes to customer service and troubleshooting so we'll see I'm gonna poke around a little bit more worst case I'm going to take this to a local stereo shop and have the experts do it, but it'd be kind of fun if I can figure it out by myself. So that is my goal. And the next part of this is going to be taking all this apart here, taking these off, removing this whole big panel here so I can actually replace the TV and put a smart TV in there. So I will follow up with you all when I have some more details. Like I said, drop a comment if you have anything that you can help with. Otherwise, I'll be back soon. Thanks. All right, one more update. So as you saw a second ago, that red power line had disconnected from the connection. It's kind of a cheap little uh, crimp on plug there. And I just noticed as I looked up, the car is off. I have the keys and the stereo is still on and it's not until I open a door that the stereo turns off 
which is how these usually work. And now when I turn the key back on again, the clock has not reset. It's holding the same time. So I solved one part of this mystery because that means that that little resistor box that I was showing you that's in this center console down here, inside there, that is what was killing power to the stereo up here. Why, I don't know. Like I said, more questions than answers, but at least I kind of figured out a little piece of the puzzle. I still have no sound out of the TV speakers. And I still haven't gotten too far. And because that little piece fell out, that red 12 volt line fell out, I now have no power to the DVD player either. So it's interesting, I have no power to the DVD player which now gave me power to the factory stereo here. So I really don't know what's going on. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research online and hopefully I can get some more answers. I will update with another video once I have this figured out.